Deportiva de Mujer. Uh, good evening. We apologize for being late. We had a few questions uh, regarding the, the races. We, uh, we want to give the most that we can without uh, increasing our, our deficit. So um, let's see how it goes. It is now, um, I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order. Seven oh eight, Tuesday the thirtieth. Uh, uh, Mr. Ramirez, can you help us with the pledge of allegiance? Mr. Eddie Ramirez, present. Mr. Rosario Villarreal, present. Mr. Nuevo Castillo, present. Mr. Uh, Demi Garcia, present. Uh, Mrs. Lopez, Dr. B, yes. myself, we do have a plan. Motion to for the uh, section number three. Do you have a motion to approve the minutes? I approve the items at section three of the approval of the minutes of the public hearing for June 11, 2019, and the regular board meeting for June 11, 2019. I make that motion. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. Mr. President, uh, at this moment, I would like just to say that I'm abstaining since I didn't attend the meeting, so I'm not voting either way. I'm just abstaining. Mr. Vasilevich, Mr. Mr. Abstain. Motion carries by uh, and to abstain. Section four, public one. Section five, information and proposal by superintendent. Sir. Item number one, discussion, consideration, and possible action. Excuse me. To replace two of GCCIS board members from Star County Appraisal District Board Direct Board, board, board of Directors. Sorry. 
Marshal and Mayor Daniel Hill. I move to remove Lloyd Castillo and Mr. Eduardo Ramirez from the Star County Appraisal District Board of Directors. We have a motion by Dr. B. Do we have a second? I have a second. Second by uh, Mr. Garcia. All in favor, raise your right hand. The right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries for the three. Item number two, discussion, consideration, and possible action to name two RGCCISD board members to the Star County Appraisal District Board of Directors. I move to appoint or name uh, Mr. Lesar Velasquez and Dr. Daria Babin to our Star County Appraisal District Board of Directors. Do, uh, we have a motion by Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries for the three. Item number three, consider. Consider and take possible action on the memorandum of understanding between Regional Women Education Service Center and RGCCISD to use school facilities for the purpose of establishing an adult education and literacy program for the 2019-2020 school year. Good evening. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number four, consider and take possible action on donations to our GCCISD. Do we have a motion on item four? I so move, Mr. President. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Villarreal. Do, do, do we have a second? I was going to ask, I have a question. I know me and Dr. B have a question. Uh, we don't, we have, we're on the donation list. Do, can we still vote on it? Are you to present the list? No, uh, we, we donate to this district and our names are there. Yes, you don't need to mention I mean, you can if you want. We can vote? Yes, you, okay. is the list, I said, my, you don't have to, you can say it publicly if you want. Oh, no. Give the list or you can just vote on it. Either. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? A second. Oh, second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, uh, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number five. Consider and take possible action. Contract site location agreement between RGV Driving Academy School and Road and the CICISD to provide driver education instruction to go in the City High School and Goya High School for the 2019-2020 school year. Do we have a motion on uh, item 5? I so move. Um, we have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number 6. Consider and take possible action in agreement between our GCCISD food services department and provide food services to Immaculate Conception School for the 2019, 2020, 2020, and 2021 school year. Do I have a motion on item six? I move to approve this item as presented. We have a motion by uh, Dr. B. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Garcia. I want to raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number seven. Consider take possible action on retaining consultants to assist the district in processing of appraisal value limitations on qualified property for an album one to LLC. Do we have a motion on item seven? I so move. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Can we have a discussion? What is this about today? We receive an application fee for the Chapter 313 agreements of 75000 And then uh, we hire 
an attorney and then we hire financial consultants so that they can make the calculations and the payments and all that sort of stuff. So those 75,000 that we received from the project company are used to pay those consultants and that's what we're... And they're used to pay the consultants to do what? To do the calculation of the payments and all those reports that need to be submitted to the controller's office. In this is state. this based on evaluations? Or yes. Based, so do they have to go evaluate the windmills or, or do they take the appraisal district's uh, evaluations? Or? Yes. They work together for that and then they submit it to the appraisal district and to the controller's office. So well, these are reports we have to submit to the yes. state? Yes, sir. And we have to do them every year? I'm not sure if every year, but it's mainly for the calculation of the payments at the beginning and then throughout. Okay. And this project. is for what wind farm, do you know? For what wind farm? This one is for Evaluate Wind 2. Uh, how many? This is the second phase. Second phase? Yes. It's already it's already working? Yes. Well, no. It's still under the... Construction? Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion on item 7? Wait, quickly. I'm sorry. Quickly. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Quickly, I just want to make sure the, the contracts that are submitted in our binder have all of the wrong superintendent's names. So okay. I just want to make sure... We will update that. Correct. We already have a motion and a second. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Mr. Vietla, second by uh, Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number eight, consider and take possible action on adoption agreement pursuant to Chapter 791 of the Texas Government Code of Purchasing Laws. On August 16, uh, 2018, RGCCISD appointed network of insurance agents or Cuellar and Associates Property and Casualty, LLC, and is agent broker of record for property, casualty, and workers' comp uh, plan. Travelers is one of the insurance companies, uh, so they operate as a tex Texas public entity group and as a pool as shown in their proposal. But travel Travelers is fully reinsured, and so as Travelers operate as a Texas public entity group, the district is not obligated to follow Texas bid requirement every year. So basically, this is just a legality to have an agreement with travelers uh, who's under the Cuellar and Associates, the agent have, that we have. Are we self-insured? What was that? Self-insured for workman's comp? Self-insured, I believe so, yes. Yeah, so this is what, is this for workman's comp? No, this is for property and casualty. Okay. So what's this agreement about? Again, in, in, in common language. Okay, so Travelers is under Cuella. So just so that we won't have to read it every year, that's why they want the agreement. It can be terminated by the board at any time. Okay, so Cuella is the person who does our insurance? It's the agent broker, yes. Okay, and he basically insures with Travelers? Travelers is one of the insurance companies with Cuella. Okay. The broker. And by doing this, we're going to stop what? Or what? How is this going no, to No, it's just an agreement with travelers, just like signing the application for the insurance. Evan, it's property um, casualties that means the fire for insurance. Yes, or property vehicles. Who do we have insurance with right now? Quayan? Yes, he's our broker. He goes out and seeks uh, our insurance. He's our company. agent, then, kind of. Right? Yes. Okay, and then he he goes to get the best quote, right? Right. So, when you get the best quote, why would we want to have an agreement with travelers? Let's say you got a better quote from Geico, let's say, or somebody else. Uh, how, how? What's the purpose of? Unless, do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, yes. we're here with travelers. We have an agent. He works for us, right? But you have several insurance companies. How do we know that we're going to get the best from? In other words. By making that agreement with travelers, are we, are we, uh... Well, we we have had travelers, uh, before. I mean, we can, even when we change to Quiet and Associates, we continue with travelers. So we've had it even when we, ha we, uh, we were under Shepard Walton King. Does he bid it out, or does he, does he get the best deal for the school? That's maybe a better That is what he's supposed to be doing, sir. Yes. Any more discussions? Do we have a motion on item eight? I move that we accept item eight as presented. 
A motion by Mr. Real. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item, item number nine, consistency possible action on letter of agreement with Pinnacle Medical Management Corp for drug testing services. Uh, this is the drug testing services company uh, that is used for employees in the transportation department. Uh, the security department and any other situation that will require that service. Uh, Pinnacle uh, is able to provide these services as per attaching the contract agreement and this agreement will automatically renew for additional one year period and can be canceled 60 days prior to the renewal date. I move that we accept item 9 as presented in our board packet. We have a motion by Mr. Arreal. Do we have a second? second? Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number 10, consider and take possible action on child care service vendor agreement for licensed facilities for 2019-2020 school year. As part of the Life Skills Grant Program, the district contracts with several daycare centers to care for children of students so they can attend school on a regular basis. The district would like to contract with the following facilities facility providers to provide the services necessary. Building Blocks Learning Center, Gracie's Child Development Center, Tammy Scaling Center, Learning Stone 2, and Nympha Lopez DBA Happy Faces. Question, ma'am. If we're going to have a three-year-old pro program, how does this apply to us now? Oh, but the, um, well, it all depends if both well, three-year-old, but how about two and... Okay, so we're responsible for two-year-olds? Yes, so that they can come and so that they can attend school, the students. This is for the children of the students attending okay, school. I get you. All of these uh, centers, are they in compliance? Yes. I move that we, we approve item 10 is presented. So we have a motion by um, Mr. Arreal. Do we have a second? Second. So, second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 11, consider and take possible action on renewal of bond for safekeeping of government property through the City High School and our GCCISD Guia High School. The school district is required to provide the U.S. Army a current bond for safekeeping of government property issued to education institutions. This bond provides that government property assigned to the Rio Grande City High School and Guia High School is, is in continuous coverage against all manner of laws in accordance with Army regulations. This action also requires appointment of a military property custodian and adoption of a resolution authorizing the superintendent of schools to execute the bond. Uh, we, have a we have a motion by Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Real. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item number 12, consider and take possible action on external auditor services contract. Uh, we are recommended that we uh, contract with Raul Hernandez and Company PC for our external audit uh, ending August 31st, 2019. Uh, fees are estimated to be at around 43000 Have we checked references out now? Uh, he has done our audit before for us in 2017, and I believe he's doing the audit for the city of Rio Grande City, and he has done prior years as well. What's his first name? What was it? Raul Hernandez. Raul Hernandez. No, this is the second time. Okay. Uh, we went out for our piece on this one, okay. so we had four companies or four auditors okay. that submitted. How did you decide which one's the best one? How did you decide which one was the best one? Well, since we have worked with Raul before, that's why we decided to... to Can you do a good do job for us, Becton? Uh, yeah. He, we finished the audit <laughs> and submitted it on time. I move that we approve item 12 as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Bean. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 13. 
consider and take possible action on tax refunds for the month of June 2019. I move that we approve item 13 as presented in our board package. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 14. Consider and take possible action on requisition $5,000 and over in a 12-month aggregate. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the board, um, Ms. Gossa, and ladies and gentlemen. Um, <coughs> Board, we do have uh, requisitions for for your consideration. Uh, these are requisitions in the amount of five thousand uh, dollars or more. Um, there is proper proper funding in in all of these uh, requisitions. I don't know if you have any specific questions or questions in general about these, but there is proper funding. I have a question, Joe. Yes, sir. Uh, I know, for example, that if if you go out and you buy more than fifty thousand dollars. Anything after that has to go out to bid, correct? Yes, sir. Because you, you, even though you buy a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand, but once you get to the aggregate of fifty thousand dollars, has to go out to bid. Yes, sir. Correct. It. So let me ask you, Hamlin Pools, we have it there for fifty-five, five thousand five hundred and sixty dollars. I know that we bought more than fifty thousand dollars from them. How could we put them there without going out to bid? Well, we we originally uh, did a bid, and I forget the exact dollar amount. Um, that, that was approved for that, and I, I believe they had options originally for to uh, finish out the uh, the job. But um, so you say we went out for bids for this? Not this specifically, but for the for building of the pool, they did have. Uh, if I remember correctly, I don't. I'm not 100 percent of this, but I believe they uh, offered an, an option originally to do the the plumbing and electrical. But, yeah, but, the, the, we're, we're but this has come uh, recently. Yeah, but this is not, uh, we're not taking the option in its entirety, right? No. So can we do that or not? Uh, that, this was just um, brought for us to, to present. Um, again, we, we, we had approved the, the original bid. Let me go to council here. Can we do it or not? Sir? We've already exhausted the $50,000 limit with Hamlin Pools. We had gone out for bids on the swimming pool and the plumbing and the electrical work was supposed to be done by somebody else. Uh, things didn't work out, so in order to speed uh, during completing the project, that's why Hamlin is going to take care if approved uh, of the plumbing and the electrical. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that once you go over 50000 in the aggregate, anything after that has to be put out into RFQs or bids. So how you just can't give the company any more okay. business, correct? That's correct. If you go over fifty thousand, if you're past fifty thousand, you have to go out to bid in one year. Correct. Yes, exactly. And then, uh, then you've got to bid it out. Exactly. Uh, this really would follow more under because it is electrical and plumbing. It would really fall under a job order contract. So, if you go under a job order contract, then the district could hire a plumber or an electrician, right. but not necessarily them. That's right. a, I know you can go hire Joe, right. Joe Electrical, and pay him, not a problem. Right. That guy, but, but you cannot hire the same company and do it again. In other words, he's, he's already exceeded $50,000. You are correct. And, and I can hire, let's call it another person to do it, and that's not a problem. I'm just saying the same company we can't. That's correct, because it's gone over $50,000 exactly. aggregate in one year. Thank you. So the best thing would be just to find, either find get somebody else, do it, right? or find somebody else that can do it. Exactly. I move that we approve that item and exclude uh, the uh, 310705 Hamlin Pool from, from, that's my motion. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Real, second by uh, Mr. Ramirez. All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed raise your left hand. Two, three. <laughs> Just count. I, I, I didn't see any Mr. Garcia. Uh, item 
15, considering take possible action in the following bid, RF number 19-30, Student Athletic and Voluntary Accident Insurance. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the school district does uh, go out for bid for uh, athletic and student accident insurance uh, annually. Um, this year, we asked for a request for proposals um, uh, for this, and we received uh, two proposals from one particular company, and the recommendation is to award the, <coughs> excuse me, to award the, um, the proposal to the, uh, the line item that uh, is listed in bold, which, is, which matches the same type of coverage that we uh, covered uh, in the past or, or last year. And there's a uh, $10,000 uh, savings. The total premium would be $396,590. And that includes a catastrophic insurance for a million dollars of 7,000. The premium on that was $7,590. How many bids did we receive? We received two bids from one company, two um, options from one company. Do we have a motion on item 15? So move, Mr. President. I second. We have a motion by Mr. Ramirez, second by Mr. Villarreal. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 16, consider and take possible action on 2019-2020 student learning objectives timeline. Good evening, Mr. Board President, and members of the board, Superintendent Schools, Ms. Garza. Item 16 is we have, as a district, adopted the student learner objectives as a 16 component in our teacher evaluation system. And attached, you will find the timeline for this component that we evaluate our teachers with. So attached is, is, a, is a timeline that we're seeking approval, respectfully seeking approval. Administration recommends approval. Do we have a motion on item 16? I so move. A motion by Mr. Real. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor say uh, raise your right hand. All opposed raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 17, consider and take possible action on 2019-2020 student code of conduct. Mr. President, in compliance with Chapter 37 of the Education Code, and before I present, uh, we did send electronic copies to everyone. I hope they received just to save. We did have three handbooks in a row we wanted to save on paper. Uh, but more importantly, we send it to our general counsel for review, just to make sure everything was looked at. So to comply with the Texas Education Code, Chapter 37, you have the, the student code of conduct. And what the student code of conduct does, it outlines standards of conduct and situations that may arise for students where they may be removed from, from school. Um, there was some changes that are statutory or editorial, so we do recommend approval. How do we communicate this to our parents? We first start off, Mr. Real. If, if approved tonight, we meet with the, uh, our principal at the uh, Alternative Center, make sure all principals are trained, updated. There are some updates that they need to look at and it must be posted online, if I'm not mistaken, by statute. Um, as far as how, what the principals do, I, I don't have no idea. I need to look into that. I'm just saying because the student code of conduct, you would, th you would think that the principals on, probably the grievous offenses should allow the parents or let them know what, you know, if it's a permissible or not permissible, and I don't know whether from a dress perspective or from, you know, just different things. I, I just don't know. I, I'm just saying maybe they should take the most grievous things on there and tell and give a little, maybe a little outline to parents of these are the cannot do's, I guess. Yes, not, not only that, I think whatever has changed, yes. I think we let a, maybe separate that because they're not, they're not going to read the whole thing again. Yes, sir. So I think it'd be good to set, set out what's changed. We'll do. So we, make it easier for the parents to read. We, thank you. I so move that we approve item 17 as presented. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 18, consider and take possible action on 2019-2020 student handbook. Mr. President, on item 18, you have the student handbook. This was also sent electronically to our general counsel for review. And this is just to give information to our parents on policies, procedures, um, to parents and guardians on procedures, policies that, that, that the school, specific school may have 
Of course, these don't contradict or supersede any policies or laws that are in the student code of conduct. Um, so I'm respectfully asking for approval that Ms. Garza would have the authority to amend any changes. She, I know she has a good idea in making these specific to high school, elementary, and middle schools. Um, of course, with that being said, with nothing that would contradict policies or laws. I so move. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. One, one quick question. Do we put these online by any chance on our website? Not the handbook, sir. Are they too long or what? No, I've, I've never done it, but... Maybe it, it's something we could put online so people, parents can access them? Yes, sir. Okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 19, consider and take possible action on employee handbook. Mr. President, the employee handbook also is, is, is geared towards sending out notices, information, policies, procedures to our employees. Every full-time employee will receive one. Um, we do have a, a uh, system of, of getting out that to departments, and, and we have to go present the, I mean, we as a department, HR. Um, it, there are changes that came out, again, statutory or could be editorial. We did send it to general counsel, just make sure it doesn't overlap with anything that we, that we have as policies and procedures. Um, this has worked well in the last three plus years. Uh, I do recommend approval of this employee handbook. Last year, their teachers were totally to wear jeans. Uh, I don't think there's been anything in the handbook about that, but are they allowed to wear jeans this coming year? Or do they even know that? Is that a I don't have a problem as long as they're dressed up. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. What I've worked, I'm sorry. We've actually communicated with the principals and we told them that as long as they're dressed in jeans and they're dressed up, not a problem. So they are communicating that to, the, to their staff members. The only problem I see is they're going to want to know exactly what dressing means. You're going to have to be very specific. I'm not faded at okay. all. I'm just saying that you're just going to have to communicate that very well. I foresee problems already. Do we have a motion on item 19? Second. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Garcia, second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 20, consider and take possible action on amendment of policy DEA compensation and benefits compensation plan. Mr. President, item 20, respectfully seek approval to amend our local DEA local policy. This is with compensation. Currently, we have 360, approximately 362 employees that get paid monthly. Uh, the reason that we'd like to amend the policy is to state that everyone would go bi-monthly that would reduce the work workload for our payroll department, decreasing overtime. Uh, the amounts are, are stated on your on your pass outs. Uh, and of course, it'll expedite the payroll process. Can you repeat that again, Mr. Uh, what we're recommending, sir, is to amend the policy where these 362 employees would be paid instead of monthly, it would be bi-monthly. So the entire district would be bi-monthly, and it would reduce the work workload for the payroll department. I, I move that we approve item 20 is presented. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 21, consider and take possible action on amendment of policy, GE, relations, and parent organizations. Mr. President, GE Local, we're not asking to amend any policy. What we're asking is to add a regulation and exhibit, um, and this was, this was approved administratively. So the a regulation would, an exhibit would, it's in your pass outs, would help create standards, protocols, procedures for parents and organizations. We're looking at uh, booster clubs, anyone fundraising, uh, dealing with monies at the campus level, parent organizations. There's the exhibit and the regulation where the regulation gives you some administrative rules and the exhibit would give you a form that would find its way back to the business office to leave that paper trail for these kind of monies. So we're not changing policy, we're adding administrative regulations and an exhibit where a form could be used uniformly throughout the district. I move that we approve item 21 as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal, second by Mr. Ramirez. I think paper raise your right hand. I ask a question before. Ms. Garza, so if somebody violates this policy, what is the consequences? Or 
Let's say somebody just collects some money and doesn't dep uh, doesn't deposit it or doesn't give it to the school to deposit. You know, that's, that's, been, the problem. that's huh? been the problem. Sir? That's been the problem. That's what I'm that's trying been to say. All the time and so what are the consequences? At this point, I don't uh, I don't know, sir. I think that uh, we would have to go through an investigation process and let the uh, police department go through the whole investigation, and then after the findings, then we'll just go ahead and determine, you know. If this is something that's been consistent or, you know, interviewing the staff in, in the office, you try to get as much data before we, you know, go through that process of a due process. So it's a big problem, right? Yes, most definitely. I know there's a big problem with the sponsorships. Uh, we've already taken care of that. We've spoken. Uh, there will be no transaction of money made from the individual sponsor. Uh, let's say parents are needing to pay X number of dollars. It, that money will not be given to the sponsor. They would have to go into the office and pay that money to the um, clerk who's in charge of collecting monies, um, the person in charge of the transmittal, the student activity account. And then that money is then um, collected daily and sent to the business office. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 22. Consider and take possible action on DNA performance of appraisal evaluation of teachers exhibit A. Consent for multiple appraisal observations totaling 45 minutes. Exhibit B. Resolution of the board to approve a list of appraisers. Mr. President, uh, DNA local deals with the evaluation system for teachers, and what you have before you is exhibit A and B. Exhibit A being that there might be a situation where a campus principal and a teacher might have to break that required 45 minutes of observation by statute, break it up into segments. That's what Exhibit A does. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they both have to be in agreement. Um, exhibit B is the list of administrators to evaluate T-test. Now again, uh, I respectfully ask that Exhibit B that the superintendent would have the authority if any changes were to occur that she, of course, that they'd be certified T-test evaluators, that she'd have the authority to add or remove from the list. I second. Well, I motion by Mr. Garcia, second by Mr. Arreal. And if I may, Mr. President, and, um, board members, Mr. Salinas, I just want to make sure that that you understand that because it is an exhibit and it's under our policy, it's not a policy. It is still, it's just a, uh, a list that would be by the superintendent because some people will go online and look at the policies and then they look at exhibit and they'll come back and say, oh, that's your, part of your school board policy. Well, all exhibits on our policy if you look at the introduction on our on our introduction page, it's online. It says that exhibits are not part of the policy, so it'll be approved list, but it will not be. It should not be online with the list. So that should right. be a separate list that's kept that's kept by the superintendent and, and HR. Yes, sir. So Just what's the difference clarify. between exhibit and policy? What's the difference? Yes. The, the exhibit is only for demonstrative purposes. Like, can you for, give me an example? For uh, for example, a teacher wants to give a, a wants a, a per, an employee wants to give a grievance, so they go under DGBA legal, right. DGBA local, and then there's DGBA exhibit, and the exhibit says, put your name, what is what was the incident, what is the date, okay. and some instructions. People, right. Exactly. Their instructions. They're kind of. They're, they are what they say exhibits, but they're not policy because yes. some people will take that those instructions and say, no, that's your policy. Just so that that list is not in in stone anywhere. That's going to list is going to be kept by the superintendent, but not online. Yes. Sir. We have a motion by Mr. Garcia, second by Mr. Real. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 25, consider and take possible action on 2019-2020 certified TPES, TPES appraisers and non-TPES appraisers. Mr. President, so by statute, our principals are supposed to be evaluated with TPES, just like our teachers with T-TES. So attached, you see a timeline that our TPES 
evaluation. For example, principals are under the superintendent. Um, the reason that we, we added to the list is we created, well, actually our assistant principals are also evaluated by PPES. So this creates the situation where the principal will have to evaluate the assistant principal. And the second part to the decision-making form that you see is non-TPES. For example, myself, I have a separate evaluation. Other department heads have different evaluations other than TPES. So we just want to provide with the board an approved list of evaluators. And timelines, I'm sorry. I move that we approve item number 25 as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 26, consider and take possible action on TKS resource system for the 2019-2020 school year. Item 24, 26. 26. Good evening, Board President, Mr. Velasquez, members of the board, and Superintendent Mrs. Garza. The curriculum department is asking for your approval for the TEKS resource system. We have been utilizing the TEKS resources system for the curriculum department. It helps teachers with their planning. So we are asking for your approval ba uh, based on availability of funds. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal, second by Dr. B. All in paper, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your le left hand. Motion carries. Item 27, consider and take possible action on Sharon Wells' supplemental resources for the 2019-2020 school year. The curriculum department asked for the approval of the Sharon Wells' uh, supplemental resources for this coming school year for second grade to fifth grade, pending uh, availability of funds. What's the cost? The cost for it uh, for um, the different grade levels is indicated but the total cost is 43584 Do you think it's an effective program? Well, for right now, sir, uh, it has helped the elementary principals to make sure that our teachers get the training and the resources available for them. We're trying to transition, uh, if I, you don't mind me saying, Mrs. Garza and uh, the other individuals, into trying and developing our own curriculum and uh, making sure to have all the items that we need instead of having to go out and uh, work with consultants constantly. So you think by next year we won't have this? We're hoping uh, to go with different phases and face it out eventually. We will try our very best. I can't guarantee it, but we will try. So this is for the We've had them for a long time. So I know that we've been trying to, uh, or we say that we want to transition them. We just, if that's our goal, we need to work with it. So we will work with the de uh, math department on this. Has the cost increased or decreased in the, in the um, time that we have? I am not sure about the cost increase or decrease. I would say it stayed the same. Uh, Mr. L.T. Guzman, uh, can you help me with that? that yeah, he says it stayed pretty much the same. Thank you, sir. Uh, excuse me. One, one of my concerns with this is, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, is that um, the worksheets, a lot of worksheets going on. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see, and I don't know if Sharon Wells provides the hands-on activities rather than, uh, or combine both, because a lot of times I would see that, that it was a lot of worksheets, constant worksheet after worksheet after worksheet. And right now, as far as we know, it's still the same. It's still a lot of duplication and a lot of worksheets. And uh, we're trying to eventually transition into more hands-on and more student-centered activities, but it will take us a little time. Mr. President and members of the board, uh, we are going to transition. I've already uh, communicated that to the curriculum department. I've uh, talked to Mr. L.T. Guzman. We had that discussion, and we feel that we need to transition, and we need to utilize our basal because it has the different... Um, diverse learners and we need to make sure that we address every single learner so we are going to allow this year um, uh, the teachers an opportunity to start working on their timelines and building that curriculum 
phasing out the sharing well so that we can do a lot of hands-on and, and use many different I've seen in the past they do like, Latin, like 30 times 30. They'll go do this like a tic-tac-toe and then yes. finally get the answer. So I agree. It, it gets kind of complicated because sometimes you don't have the tic-tac-toe to work with. That is right. Yeah. I move that we approve item 27 <coughs> for this year. Yes, only. sir. Only for this year. It. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise Thank your you. left hand. Motion carries. Item 28, consider and take possible action on Agile Mind Mathematics Supplemental Resource for the 2019-2020 school year. We'd like to continue with Agile Mind uh, this school year. Uh, we are looking at the campuses of Rio Grande City CISD Gruya High School. Rio Grande City High School and Guyan Middle School, depending on availability of funds. What is Agile Mind precisely? Agile Mind is a digital uh, program that's for uh, teaching and learning. It's a system available for uh, the leaders, the teachers, and the students. It gives the teachers lessons in mathematics and worksheets, and they also have activities for the children, and it's all uh, digital. So it kind of gives them lesson plans? Uh, it does give it does give examples as to how the lesson needs to be and the content of the lesson and also the depth and complexity of the lesson. I move that we approve item 28 as presented. We have a motion by Mr. Real. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 29, consider and take possible action on Keep Calm and Teach on new ELAR -E slash S-A-L-A-R-T-E-K-S-M-E-L-P-S. Good evening, Mr. Velasquez, Board President, and Ms. Lerner, for Superintendent of Schools, Board Members, and Audience Present. For this, coming, for this coming school year, 2019-2020, we have new ELR, which is the English Language Arts, and SLR, which is the Spanish Language Arts TICS, um, that, which are the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, along with the ELPS, which are going to be revised for this coming year as well. To be in compliance with uh, all these required changes by TA, we need to train our teachers that teach the ELR and SLR, which is the Language Arts. Um, and it has to be done from kindergarten all the way to middle school. Uh, the middle school uh, teachers have already attended different trainings throughout this past year, but we haven't trained the elementary. So the bilingual department, along with the curriculum and instruction department, is seeking permission to bring Region 1 consultants during the staff development days that we have uh, in the following weeks, which is uh, August 13th and 14th, so all our teachers from kinder through fifth grade can get these trainings and be in compliance. Uh, we will utilize uh, state bilingual funding, and the total amount is $11,160. And this is something that we must do in order to be in compliance, and this would be only for the ELR, SLR teachers. So we respectfully request your approval. I move to approve this item as presented. We have a motion by Dr. B. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Villarreal. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your Thank left you. hand. Motion carries. Item 30, consider and take possible action on N2Y solution software program for the 2019-2020 school year. Good evening, Mr. Velasquez, school board president, board members, Ms. Garza, superintendent of schools, ladies and gentlemen. The special education services department is respectfully requesting the approval of the N2Y solutions software program for the 2019-2020 school year. The N2Y Solution Software Program is a total solution for special education which allows teachers to seamlessly deliver a complete differentiated core instructional program tailored to individual classroom and student needs. N2Y Solutions includes four different programs in one. The first one is the Unique Learning Systems, which is a standard-based program which allows special needs students to access the general education curriculum. The second program included is the News to You, which is a weekly online newspaper that connects students to the world through news and current events. The third program is the Symbol Sticks Prime, uh, which depicts the people, events, and activities that are educationally relevant through a relevant symbol set. And the fourth and last program included with the N2Y Solutions is the L3 Skills. 
This supports the lifelong learning and supplements foundation skills for learners. The cost of this program is $22,916 and is being funded through IDEA B224. We respectfully recommend approval of this program. I move to present, to approve this item as presented. We have a motion by Dr. V. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Villarreal. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item 31, consider and take possible action on Edgenuity online program for the 2019-2020 school year. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Ms. Garza, superintendent of schools. We are asking permission to, uh, for the renewal of the Edgenuity online program for the 1920 school year. This online program was utilized last school year by students in the three different high schools, the Alternative Center and the Chance to Be Centers with very positive results. Edgenuity not only provides an extensive library of core courses and electives for credit recovery, but additional online assistance for blended learning that includes advanced placement uh, courses and virtual learning. It also has state and national test preparation, college readiness courses to include STAR, EOC, ACT, SAT, GED, and TSI. So it's got everything. Uh, the contract with Ingenuity for this school year will run from September 1st through August 31st, and it includes two staff development days. Uh, it's including 285 site licenses, and the, of course it's an opportunity for students to make up coursework that they weren't able to do throughout the school year. Uh, we usually run the biggest program for Edgenuity. We run it all year, but the biggest emphasis is during the summer months when kids need to pick up uh, credit in order, especially for our seniors, we want to make sure that they graduate. So uh, the total cost for Edgenuity is $83,650. This will be paid by SCE 199 And we did go up for three bids. Uh, we do have, and this was the best uh, solution for us. And so we want to continue with this. Mr. President, I move that we uh, approve uh, item 31 as presented in a board packet. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All in, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Item 32, consider and take possible action on Tango Solutions software. Okay. Um, in an effort to provide additional resources for our campuses, a comprehensive data solution software will be uh, purchased with your permission for the district school year 1920, and we're asking for the 2021 school year as well. The Tango software includes a, ready, a reading and math intervention resource bundle, which we have not had, data analysis, web hosting, pre and post testing in English and Spanish for all grades, all subjects, custom formative assessment and weekly checkpoints in all grades, custom credit check for high schools, curriculum and assessment monitoring system, and professional development. The proposed purchase for the 2019-2020 uh, is um, $195,120 with 50 cents per school year. So we're asking for two years to be approved tonight so that we can uh, follow through with the plan that we have in order to streamline all of our computer programs. I've included in your packets, or I think uh, Ms. Becky, provided um, additional packets, a side-by-side -side so that you could see what pr computer programs we're using, what we used this past year, what we plan to use this school year, and then what it, the, the savings looks like once we full, go to full implementation on uh, um, picking just one software to do all the other things that the other softwares were doing. So, you know, the savings is pretty significant. Um, from this school year, so we're pretty excited about that. We also included in your packet the DMAC, which is the one we use now, the solution we use now, uh, compared to the Tango software that we're asking you to um, approve. And it's a side-by-side -side comparison of the things that DMAC did for us and now what Tango will do for us, which as you can see, there's a lot of additional resources that Tango has. Um, so we're asking for your approval for the 2019-2020 and the 2020-2021. And of course, funding will be coming from SEE 199 upon available funding. Matt, yes, I have sir. a bunch of questions. Could yes, I sir. Start? I have some questions. Yes, sir. Okay. 
What what program were you using before? DMAC. DMAC. What was the cost of DMAC? DMAC runs about. I have it here. DMAC runs about thirty-six thousand six hundred and thirty-four dollars per year. Thirty-six thousand. Yes, sir. Ma'am, uh, well, let me ask Ms. Garza. Uh, I, and I, the only school I'm aware of is La Grulla High School because it came out of the internet. They went from a low B or a 60 to a medium B, and apparently they, they were pretty successful, correct? That's I mean, correct. correct. So I'm saying if, if, the, if the DMAC worked pretty well back then, if it ain't broke, why are we fixing it? In other words, apparently, uh, and I don't know how the rest of the school, I just know about La Grulla because it came out online. If they did well, uh, the questions I have, why do we have to change it? And have we asked? survey teachers what they really want or what they don't want? We did not, sir, but in looking at all the different departments and interviewing every single department head about their needs and about the different programs that are being um, uh, utilized in the classrooms and in the campuses, there are, if you can see the comparison that uh, Ms. Gonzalez made, uh, we're looking at different standalone programs. It's not just the assessment piece that we're looking at. We are looking at these different uh, programs in isolation that provide other services. Um, we're looking at the entire district from pre-K all the way to 12th grade. And so if we look at that, um, the Tango system has a program which is the Lion Reading and the Lion Math that actually assesses children to identify their reading uh, ability level and their independent reading level. Aside from that, it provides all the other resources that the teachers need to do the direct instruction. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've noticed that uh, we needed to address the content at all the other campuses. Um, again, it's the view of the entire school district. Um, we do have areas of concerns, and um, the, this program actually has been very successful in Los Fresnos, Harlingen, and Brownsville. And um, in looking at uh, the content that it also delivers, it, it's a lot of content that teachers do not have to create that we can actually just uh, identify the TEKS that are being taught and that we can generate assessments, generate personalized, prescribed um, student um, uh, material to address individual needs uh, that teachers can actually use through intervention or use through tutorial time or use during any other inter uh, support staff that can also use it. We're trying to um, obtain a program that can identify those students um, in addition, that we can actually store all that historical data to make informed decisions. Those are lacking in our, in our DMAC system, and they're lacking in all the other software programs that we're utilizing. The other problem um, in interviewing uh, principals and interviewing departments is that because we have too many programs, um, they're not being utilized effectively because they only have so many number of uh, computer labs. And so we, if we streamline, we're just using one program, and that's why we included, um, for your approval, um, NY2, um, N2Y, and uh, the Ingenuity, because those are different uh, student populations, and the, this program does not provide us or afford us um, this type of um, resources that we need to make sure that we continue to improve and we need to look at data instantly and be able to make informed decisions. Our goal is to help all campuses increase just like Mr. Adolfo Peña has. Um, I'm not saying, I mean... How, how could I ask, did we do better as a district? I haven't seen any... Yes, sir. Okay. We'll, we'll do better as a district. No, did we do better this year as a district? I mean, I know the unofficial grades have come out. I haven't seen it. And video. that and, is an and, information and item that is going to be um, um, presented uh, to everyone. There were campuses that uh, regressed by 4% or 5% but still kept their uh, campus rating. And that's what we want to prevent because we are trying to, um, the accountability system requires three different groups of um, accountability, uh, three different levels of achievement, uh, which is your approaches, your needs, and your masters. And we need to be able to identify those students and be able to provide a very prescriptive program so that we can excel our students in those different levels of achievement. The only thing I say, ma'am, is that in a over two-year period, we're looking at a $320,000 increase in what we have presently. And and I'm just saying, we did well uh, this this last year. And I don't even know about like that. But if you look at the comparison, sir, we're actually saving a hundred and some thousand dollars 
the, uh, this coming school year and the following year, we're looking at 367,000 compared to the 557,000 that we were spending that we spent last year. How, how could you could you go over that? How how do you get arrive at that? Gina, can can you which part, sir? Huh? The savings? The cost. Yeah. Okay, so this past year we had, for example, iStation reading program. That was a computerized program where kids go, they get tested, they get screened, and then they have like a follow-up lesson, right? right? So that's a computer one. That one we we paid a two year on that one, and it was about a hundred and about one hundred eighty thousand for the for the two years. I put there the half, which is ninety eight thousand. That was iStation. We're replacing what they they do. It's within Tango, okay? So that's one. DMAC is just a, a data storage. Exactly. It doesn't do any interventions. It doesn't tell us uh, resources for kids. It's just a, it, it's a, it's a, a storage data solution. That's all it really does. It gives us star data. This is what you scored, um, in it, and it stores information for us. Then we have the other one that we're, we're trying to uh, move aside is the mind play. You see the one where it says special ed mind play, 108,750. Well, what MindPlay does is what Tangle has as well. So it's kind of like we're getting one program that does a lot of things, and we're, say, we're, we're taking out the individual programs um, that stand alone. Um, the other one is the, oh, not the Odyssey base, where, not that one. Let's see. Those are, those are the main ones that encompass everything that, de that uh, Tangle has. The other thing that that Tangle has that, that a DMAC doesn't have is on this other paper that we... Yeah, really the two big ones are the one you're saying, isolated yeah, the two, program. Right. And, and, and uh, basically the other one that you just mentioned, uh, which is MindPlay. Right, and iStation is really for the elementary. Uh, it goes, I believe, Mr. T, up to sixth grade, pre-K through eighth grade. So it, it limits it, us as far as using it for the other kids, the secondary. Tango doesn't limit us. It's all the way to a high school, 12th grade. Um, and then the um, mind play, that's just for special how education. Long, how long have we had mind play? It's got some mind play. One year. How many? Seven months, she says. Seven, okay. six or seven we months. We have it before, right? Or did we no. Have it? no. No. It's something we, we put there, right? Right. It's a recent uh, okay. program. It's, it's a recent program, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So if we... We're trying to put everything in one one solution that gives us, you know, access to every every child, and this seems to be the one that that has more of the checks boxes checked. Um, the only thing I say, um, uh, Mr. Paris, is that I know we've had experience with Tangle before. Yes, sir. And it would be nice to get the input of teachers to see what they think and. If they no, say fine, if, they, if the majority say fine, I have no problem with it. We did present to the directors today. Uh, and previously to some school board members as well. The, I think Ms. Lopez was there, Mr. Garcia was there, and Mr. Velasquez were there so also just to show them what the program can do. But if, if the board would request uh, that you would want the teacher input, we could do that too. I have no problem. Why can't we take a survey of the teachers and see what they think? Well, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, yes, some of the complaints of the previous uh, software system was it wasn't, it was kind of a database as well, and it did not, it may have given you results on our students, but it didn't actually give you anything to do with them thereafter. And so there's been some major overhauls, if I'm correct, over the last few years that make it very much comprehensive and yes. able to identify individual kids within yes. the classroom so that teachers can group them, not just tell them their deficiencies, but actually give them activities that will improve their deficiencies. Yes, ma'am. And am I correct also? It will also let us know um, how our kids within, I think, two to three points be able to predict how we should do on STAR. Yes. And within 0. 0.5 to 1 point, let it's us know It's very specific. How we're do with our grading. Yes. And it gives you an uh, individual education plan, kind of, where it, it tells you, okay, um, this is the summary. She's having trouble in summarization, but specifically in this. So it's very detailed, which is something that's really, really good because sometimes we tend to teach summarization one way and we we miss the boat you know and so this one pretty much breaks it down and says specifically this teak but this vocabulary this uh this uh, uh sentence stem so it's very specific on how can we help that particular child which of course dmec does not do any of that um and i think i agree one of the things that I, because i've spoken to teachers about it and their complaint is actually this sheet that we're looking at this species yes ma'am all of these different types of software that they're asked to utilize 
and and it, which is difficult because they're also asked to teach and so then they're given data and they don't know what to do with it and somewhere I think our kids get lost. Yes, one of the biggest complaints from the schools is you're giving us too much. When do you expect the kids to do all of this? Exactly. So, yeah, that is a complaint that we and hear. It's hard to ask the teacher. Yeah, she can tell you. You can say these are your deficiencies in your kids. Now go figure out how to fix it. And right. I can only imagine that that's very difficult. And I think that might have been a portion of the problem with Tango before. But they've gone back. They weren't able to affect content. Now they're able to implement Correct. all of that and give you right on the spot. It's changed dramatically. Yes. And all of the districts that actually are using it are usually about 90, 91%, correct? And correct. And we're going to save about $190,000 uh, to yes. go ahead and implement it. Yes. Excuse me, one of the things you did not mention, and, and you know, being that I was a counselor, there's going to be something for the... The PGP? I don't the know credit? what it's called. Yeah, the yeah, credit. high school credit. It monitors, we just heard of it today, I mean, I, I got to see the full... Uh, presentation today. PGP is where uh, when a student goes in as a freshman, they're given like a, a degree plan, right? So you check and see this child has to follow all this coursework in order to graduate with a certain, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Endorsement, right? So this program, if a counselor goes in and removes, let's say, uh, out, uh, I don't know, world history, or, or geography, right away the computer will program and say, wait a minute, if you take that off, it's going to affect your endorsements. And you no longer, the plan that you had as a freshman, you're no longer going to get that endorsement. So it's, it's got little checkpoints where it helps counselors make sure that nobody falls off of the plan, and if so, that they, they are fully aware that they're off the plan. Because we have a lot of new counselors, I know Ms. Morris was talking about that today. We really need to help the counselors so that they, no child uh, will lose an endorsement because they just didn't know. So this this triggers that and it helps you monitor that, which is kind of neat. The only thing I'm saying, ma'am, and I'm going to shut up after this, uh, I know that our teachers have had uh, experiences with both, well, this platform and the past. And I know that DMAC doesn't cover everything, I understand that. But it would be nice to get a survey and input on teachers to see what they really want. And if they want Tangled, so be it. If they don't, well, because they've had experience with sure, it before. Sure, sure. But that's, I've said enough. And the, and the problem is follow-up assessment, because I do remember last time that Django was an issue, a lot of people were complaining about how it worked, and they were all confused about the instruction, all, all confused about how, I guess, it operated. So if you're telling me it has major overhauls, yes. well, let's make sure it actually works in our district. Just because it works somewhere else doesn't mean it's going to work here. So it's about the implementation, sir, well, and it's about the expectation. So right. we are going to make sure that everybody implements So the, the issue for me is follow-up if, if it gets approved. And then number two, um, just to make sure that the costs are actually the savings because we've gone to the, the habit of saying savings will come down the road, to make sure that we're actually saving because let's just, let's just do it. Let's just make sure it does what it says Absolutely. it's going to do. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent program. I fell in love with it. And... Um, as an educator, I would I would want it in my campus, and I know that if t teachers were to listen to the presentation, and if you all would would uh, um, have the opportunity as well, you would just be amazed an with what it does and what it would do for our, our district and our students, our teachers, um, everyone, because it, it's uh, it's instant, and we know where our kids are lacking and how we can be successful. So and I know two or three board members were present for whatever was presented. Uh, there's a few other ones that wouldn't mind hearing that as well. All I'm trying to say, we have experience with this product in the past. It would be nice to get some input from teachers, but Dana said that already. So, my, my, my question is, how are we planning to train our teachers on this program since that's one of the, one of the main complaints that teachers had that before they were just like here, there, here, there's the tango, work yeah. with it, but they didn't have any training. Uh, Mr. Velasquez, can I just ask, why was it terminated last time? Well, was, I, I wasn't doing it. It was, it was based on complaints from the employees, teachers. We do have embedded in the in the proposal training days, and I'm sure we're, the days that, that the teachers come back, a couple of those days will be utilized for this particular training. And you can actually tell, you look around, I see some faces, and then some people looking down, and so I think, honestly, uh, some, there's a little bit of 
disagreement there. I mean, all I'm saying is we had this program before, and not our board, but the, the board that terminated, and there's got to be reason for it. With all due respect, sir, you had a different program that has been overhauled because people have paid attention to the same complaints and concerns that our teachers had. Also, it's my understanding that poor implementation is a large part of why a lot of people are very skittish about going through this program again. And I'm not someone who's huge on curriculum, so I also ask for them to come in and educate me because before I present anything to any teacher, I want to make sure for me it makes sense, just as a board member. And so I have to say, I'm impressed. As a healthcare professional, a system that lets me know right away what's wrong with somebody and then tells me how to fix it, and I understand that that was not the program before. And it follows our kids from the moment they begin in our district to the time that they graduate. If you can give me something else that offers that, then please let me know. But the 15 pieces of software that we have already, apparently, yes, we're doing okay, but we could do much better. And Mr. Velasquez, to answer your question, sir, um, there is a process of training. We train central office personnel. Then we train principals. We train our deans of instruction. We train our lead teachers to then turn around and train their um, uh, respective teachers within their content area. The problem was poor imp implementation. The program, what we had 10 years ago, is not the same program that we are uh, actually wanting to uh, request approval for. It has major, major improvements. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, Mrs. Lopez, she's been a great educator, so I, I saw her excitement when we had the presentation. Do we have a motion on item 32? I move to approve this item as presented. Well, we have a motion by Dr. B, second by Mrs. Lopez. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries for the through. Item 33, consider and take possible action and request for permission to purchase laptop computers for classroom teachers. In an effort to provide additional resources for our campus teachers, laptop computers will be purchased for each classroom teacher, well, for all teachers, for the 1920 school year. Um, we are looking at a budgeted amount of 571200 and this will be coming from Title I, Part 8 to 11. Do we have a motion on item 33? I so move. We have a motion by Mr. Villarreal. We have a second by Mr. Castillo. Um, we, uh, the proposed t Title I, I can't start spending until September 1. So we're going to try and place the order immediately um, and then in September 1. Um, so what we plan to do is put a picture of the laptop computer um, in, their, in the teacher bags so they know what they're getting. They just have to wait just a little bit because it's just the way it is. We, we don't get our, our 1920 budget until September 1. Sorry, that's just the way it works. That was motion, motion by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Castillo. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 34, consider and take possible action on request for permission to purchase iPad Pro computers for school board members. Do I have a motion on item 34? We have a motion by Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries for the three. Mr. Garza, at this time, can I request that I not get? I, I don't want the iPad or the computer. Okay. Yes. Same for me, Mr. Garza. Is, is this for um, to use? We would. As well? The reason for the purchase is so that we could go um, paperless, um, so that we can view the agendas and all the attachments. That was the whole purpose of the iPad. I think that as for me, uh, we're killing a lot of trees, and it becomes a very difficult time trying to dispose of these documents, especially with the private and um, 
significant nature of these documents, plus having to go through them. A lot of times I get agendas that are delivered to me at my office, which is um, closed by the time I get there. Having the ability to access all of the important information and have it available is important to me. I don't care how we do it. You can give me an old laptop. It really doesn't matter. But as someone who does also care about children and the environment, I think we need to move forward. And we're starting with our teachers because we're trying to make sure that you too have the ability to access whatever you need to um, when it's convenient for you as well. And we want to be able to make sure we're able to do the same as your board members. Section 6, reports on information. Item 1, report on school uniforms for RTCCISD Gruya High School. Good evening, Board President, members of the Board, Ms. Garza, and everyone that's present. The RDCCISD Gruya High School would like to inform the district and the community that school uniform shorts will be royal blue for sophomores to seniors and white for freshman class. There is no cost to the district. Item number two, report on school supplies for all RDCCISD students. Sorry, miscommunication. It's okay. Um, we are request. Well, uh, this the RGCCISD will provide general school supplies for all students uh, the 2019-2020 school year. Um, they will be basic general needs, um, and I believe I'm not sure, but I don't. I believe you should have a copy of the supplies that each school will be getting or each student will be getting. So, and that will be coming out of SEE 199. I have one question. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I went to the board packet. I didn't see in the last meeting it wasn't approved. In what meeting was it approved on? Just out of curiosity. Uh, really? I didn't see it approved in the last board meeting. I, I went through the agenda. I didn't see this item being approved. So I'm, I'm saying I think it's a great idea, but when did we approve it? Uh, Mr. Vidal, we're, <clears throat> we're following uh, the bid that we had approved for the school year, which is bid number 19-01 for office and instructional supplies. And we went out and we, we sought uh, three uh, quotations because uh, what the district wanted to do was to be able to provide each classroom uh, all the students uh, supplies where they would all be boxed up and uh, given to every specific classroom throughout the district. I think it's a great idea, Joe. I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just saying, can we go from instructional, office instructional supplies and buy them through that avenue? I, I don't have a problem with Yes, it. And, and if I may, I believe that what happened was it had already been budgeted and it had already been approved as a, as a line item. So that that had already been approved for the whole year, and they're just taking funds out of that, out of those items that had already been approved. So we approved that amount, so was that budgeted? Um, originally, no, but we approved a, uh, a catalog bid for the school year um, from September 1st of 2018 through August 31st of 2019. I don't get me wrong, I think it's a great idea. I just want to make sure we do it right, that's all. I, I believe it's, I don't think there's anything that's improper. I put it that way. Okay. 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 Thank you, John. Um, any discussion on item three, four, five, and six? We added one item, item number seven, report on preliminary task, task, star. Res, star? Mm -hmm. results, star, 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 
Mr. Rashid Ahmed Prasad Sun, practice for the board members. Good evening, Mr. Velasquez, board president, board members, Ms. Garza, superintendent of schools, and all of the audience present here tonight. I will wait for Mr. Rashid to finish handing out. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Ms. Gasta, our superintendent of schools, uh, she asked that we do uh, provide to the community and to, of course, the board members. We did get approval from TEA uh, to discuss um, or to present these preliminary ratings, and that's exactly what they are, preliminary. The final ones will be released on August the 14th. We did receive these from TEA. Um, I do have to include the disclaimer. At the uh, request of TA, the uh, data that you have before you could change from now to August with any rescore requests that we may get um, or any resolutions that we need to resolve. We do not have any requests as of this time, and I, have, I check daily for any uh, resolutions that need to be done on all of the uh, assessments that were submitted um, at any time, you know, in the spring, in the fall, of, in December, in the spring, or in the summer, and we have none. So uh, we do have to wait for the official one. So just uh, this is a disclaimer that this is preliminary ratings. For the school district, for RGC CISD, the overall score for um, 2019 is an 87. So we did get a letter grade of a B. We do. <laughs> I will be happy to discuss in detail with all of you at a work session, maybe at the A through F, in detail so that you can understand it. It is based on three domains. Okay, so you do have the uh, student achievement. We did get a B, which is an 85. Uh, we have uh, the second domain is two parts, part A and part B. We have a 76 and an 89 in part B. The state uh, takes the best from each one and also the best from but domain two or domain uh, one. And that is based at a 70%. That'll be on the next slide. And then we did get a closing the gaps in domain three at an 81. And that is 30%. And if you look at the next slide in your packet, and for those of you in the audience, on the screen, that is how it's weighted. I do want to mention that in the accountability manual on page 50, chapter five, um, if you have a campus, and we're gonna get to the next slide, that um, fares uh, a letter grade of an F, there is no way we can get an A, either in the domains. That's okay, I do mention that, right, Ms. Garza, and I did talk to uh, TA. I do want to mention that in um, school uh, student achievement, we did have an A, but the state, the highest they could give us is an 89. We did fare a 91, but the highest, and it's on page 50 on the accountability manual, the highest we could get is an 89 because we have a, a campus that did not uh, perform. Uh, within a D or higher. So this breaks it down for you um, by the weight. Like I told you, they get the better of A or B, which was the 89. They get the better of domain one or two. We had an 85. So obviously they go with the 89. We could have had the 91. but So then we uh, multiply that by 70. It gives us 62.3. And then our closing the gaps, which is a very interesting uh, domain, and I'll be happy to discuss that with you. It, we have that and we divide, I'm, I'm sorry, we multiply by 30, so we have 24.3 points. We add that up, we have an 86.6. So we have a letter grade of a B. In the next slide, I know you're anxious to know every individual campus. I do want to mention as well that last year was the very first year of the A through F implementation in the state of Texas, but only the districts were going to get a letter grade last year. The campuses were still rated at met standard or improvement required. All of our campuses met standard last year, and our district did receive a letter grade of a 78. This year, this is the first year that both the district and all campuses do get assigned a letter grade. So on your slide that you have before you, I gave you, I provided the 2018 scale score, and then you have the 19 scale score, the 18 letter grade, and the 19 letter grade. And I'll, with a caveat that this is preliminary, we do have a high school with an A, and we do have one elementary with an A. 
And at the very last column, I did provide you what's in yellow were our gains. We did have one middle school that maintained their score. And then we do have those five campuses that had some losses in their points. And again, at the work session, we'll be happy to discuss with you how, um, all, how we, the state derives all of this uh, information for the accountability system for the sake of time. And again, let me remind everybody that they are preliminary. We do get final ones on August the 14th. Any questions, Bernard? I, I got some not questions. Let me just begin by thanking all the students, parents, all the teachers, and everybody in the RGCCISD family. To go from a 77 to an 87, congratulate yourselves. Pat yourselves on the back. You did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you. As I look through the, the letter grades and I say, and I look at them, I say B's is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten B's, two A's, three C's. We had one F. But overall, again, fantastic. I couldn't say enough accolades. Thank you for everybody who was involved in making this happen. Thank you. I do like to take this time also to congratulate every single uh, student in our district, every single teacher, principal, administrator. It takes a whole team to make a difference, and we will continue to uh, push forward and improve um, student achievement. Uh, we have a very focused group. We have a very focused uh, goal, and that's to make sure that we increase our uh, student achievement. So I am very eager and excited to work with every single uh, campus and uh, principals, students, teachers, everyone. We're going to, um, I foresee that we are going to have substantial gains. So thank you again for the hard work and the dedication. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. It is now 8.33 under authority of the Texas, Texas Government Code Section 551.0. 071, we're now headed to closed session. <laughs> it is nine nine ten. We're back from closed session. Item A, there's no action on item A. Do we have a motion on item B? Do we have a motion by Mr. Garcia? Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All in opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Um, item C, any motion on item C? We have a motion by Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. B. Discussion, sir. Discussion. A discussion. Okay. Uh, I just want to make uh, a statement today that we are approving an individual who does, has, does not have a Chapter 21 a contract. The uh, person. Uh, but, uh, before we go, it, personnel issues can only be discussed in executive session. Uh, you can just say that you're going to vote against it as okay. you discuss an executive. But you cannot. You cannot say individuals. Okay. It would Fine. be, that would be a good statement. Okay. Do you have a motion on item C? By uh, Mr. Garcia, sorry, second by Dr. B. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries, 43. Any action on item uh, D? We have a motion by Mr. Garcia. Do we have a second? Second by Dr. B. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your left hand. Motion carries. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Garcia. Second by Dr. B. Motion. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, say, raise your left hand. Motion carries. It is now 9-12, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good night.